This video is about looking under the hood of the home you're about to buy. It's the longest video in the series and it's one of the most important. Hi, I'm Don Reedy. You don't purchase a home sight unseen. I'm going to let you in a little secret here. Homes aren't new even when they're new. Older homes have lots of things that aren't quite the way they were when they were first built. Let's look at how important it is to do your inspections, to look at the house before you actually move in. So section 12 of the Residential Purchase Agreement is the buyer's investigation of the property and matters affecting the property. First highlighted area, the buyer's acceptance is a condition. It's a contingency of the agreement. The buyers get to investigate, look. If they find things they don't like, they can ask to have them repaired. And it's really up to the seller and the buyer then to come to an agreement or not. These inspections are done at the buyer's expense. And in this whole paragraph, it talks about a number of the things they can do, and that includes a registered uh, structural pest control uh, company doing a termite inspection. Uh, there's some things that termite people uh, sometimes do. They poke holes in some of the, uh, the structures outside. They're allowed to do that. That's sort of the, the only way they can find them. And there are other things that they're not allowed to do. The seller needs to make the property available for the buyer and the buyer's investigators and the seller needs to have the water, the gas, the electricity and all the operable pilot lights on likewise. So we know that the buyer gets to do their inspections but how much time do they have to do them? So in section 14 of the purchase agreement we see the time periods and in section B the buyer has 17 days. That's 17 days to complete their inspection, to complete termite. If there are issues with the roof or electrical or plumbing, they can bring in contractors as well. You see in section two that uh, if there are issues, the buyer can request that the seller make repairs. And then in section three, that uh, prior to the 17 days uh, elapsing, the buyer and the seller have to have an agreement, come to an agreement so that the uh, buyer removes their inspection contingency. This is the request for repair form you're going to fill out. Uh, here you see that the buyer is re requesting that the seller pay to make certain repairs to the home and those just get filled out. You work with your realtor and you fill those out right here and uh, you're asked the seller to either make those repairs or in lieu of that to potentially give you a credit or a reimbursement. Let's say you think the repairs are going to cost $5,000 you can just ask the uh, seller to give you a $5,000 credit instead of actually making the repairs. And down below here you see section 1 and section 2 termites. Section 1 means there's actually infestation. There's termites crawling around the house and you want those fixed and you're asking the seller to pay to have those repaired. So now we're going to do a home inspection. Let's talk about how you get the most you can out of that inspection. In my experience, an inspection is really a three-person job. Of course, it's the job of the home inspector. This is a person that's qualified, does this for a living, knows what to look for. It's also the job of the real estate agent. I don't know if uh, this is something that's uh, commonly known. Every real estate agent does what's called an agent's visual inspection disclosure. What that means is I go to the house, I look and I see that there's a crack in the concrete, a screen is broken, there might be water under the sink. Agents do that uh, to benefit their clients. The third person in this job is you. Let's take a look at how that process actually occurs. Here's what happens in a home inspection. You meet together with a home inspector and you can expect to be there for anywhere between two and three hours. I want you to be like a puppy. Follow that home inspector around like whatever they're talking or looking at is the most important and the cutest thing you've ever seen. It's the home inspector's job to find every single thing that's wrong with the house. They're not evaluating how important it is to you or how important or not important it is to the seller. They're merely going to call out everything that they see. You're specifically looking at items that are safety issues, electrical, plumbing, those things through the eyes of the inspector can uh, be pretty important to you. 
As the inspector does his or her inspection, follow along behind them. Uh, learn how to turn the uh, water on and off at the main. Learn how to turn the electrical on and off at the panel. These are things that a lot of times people don't ask and you walk into a home and uh, frankly you just don't know where these things are, but the inspector will uncover all of them for you. So when you're finished with the home inspection, you should have a pretty good idea through the inspector's eyes of what's significant and what's not. That leads us to the request for repairs. So we've done our inspection and now we know that there's some things that are wrong with the house. The request for repairs is the mechanism that we use to ask the seller to fix some of the things that we found that um, really don't quite look right to us. Now for instance, if the, if the electrical is uh, unsafe, then we really expect the seller to fix that. If there's a plumbing leak, we generally will expect the seller will fix that. But what about the uh, crack in the concrete? What about that ripped screen? What about uh, the fact that uh, there's uh, scuff marks on the ceiling or, or, or any other issue that crops up? Is that really something that we expect the seller to fix? Here's my take on that. A good real estate agent factors a lot of the condition of the house into the asking and selling price. So if you're working with me and you're a buyer, I've already done my homework and we've talked about what comparable homes like this are selling for, so that when we walk into a house and we finally make that offer, we make an offer based on the fact that this house looks absolutely pristine. I mean, we're going to move in here tomorrow and party, or it looks like it needs some work. We factor the overall condition into our offering price. Requests for repairs can be uh, a thorn in the side to the seller. You know, let's face it, if I walk into your home today and I tell you that your home looks dirty or uh, point out this or that, uh, it's just human nature. You're not really going to like it that much. So uh, this is a section of the uh, home buying process where a really experienced realtor is going to help you by being able to ferret through the things that you really must ask for as opposed to everything you can ask for. Listen, I'm really uh, thankful that you're here and now you know more about uh, the inspection process. This is going to make you a much smarter buyer or seller. If you uh, have any more questions about this specific topic or any real estate questions, just comment down below. I'll uh, answer your question immediately. Like our page, subscribe. We do weekly videos and they will make you a smarter buyer or seller. I'm Don Reedy, the most interesting man in real estate.